Mmm, nice, very nice. <sighs> I don't even know what to say about this one. Is this what humanity has come to? How in the world something like this is made, let alone even thought up, is beyond me. But you clicked the video. I promised you a review. Let's do this. In 2044, AI drained all of the resources on Earth, and it's left a barren husk where humans can't live. Eventually, they managed to escape the planet into space, where they formed the Rebel Alliance led by Princess Kali Devine. The rebels are sworn enemies of the Argons, whose only mission is to eradicate all living, breathing humans. To do this, they've resorted to using ancient alchemy. It's now the year 4044, and the fight still rages on. We see the Argons preparing for war. This is the general, Joseph Stalin. I'm not even joking, but just wait, it gets better. Or worse, probably. I would tell you what's going on right now, but I don't really understand because of the thick German accent. For ours is a fight for the very soul. Why give him an accent? Why are they speaking English in the first place? Anyway, while they're out fighting, their main leader, Rothschild, goes to some Egyptian planet and talks to Anubis, asking for help. And, in return, the god will have his army in the underworld. What's Rothschild asking for? For Arouso of Alistair Crowley again. Freaking Alistair Crowley. But wait, it gets better. Crowley is actually an alien. I'm Alistair Crowley. Yeah, so if you didn't know, Aleister Crowley was really into the occult, and generally remembered as a really weird dude. That, oh yeah, is a hornball for some reason. I haven't had to b up in 3,000 years! Rothschild explains that he looks like an alien because he is and always was an alien, even on Earth. But really, it's probably just because they didn't know how to animate things like facial features. Anyway, Princess Callie meets with Van Helsing. Yep, you heard me right. This isn't the original vampire hunting Van Helsing, though, but just a clone with all of his traits. She tells him that there's only 420 humans left on Earth. Go figure. We also find out that the Argons have a super bomb that can wipe out two thirds of the galaxy. Humans will be extinct before the next year. There is a robot that knows the Argon's plans and how they're going to use the bomb. So Van Helsing goes to visit the Exterminator. I'm not even surprised they're ripping off the Terminator at this point. That's Exterminator to you, Van Helsing. Call me VH. Anyway, he isn't much help. He hates humans more than the Argons, and he ain't talking. It's not all bad news for the human race, however. We do have some allies, one being Queen Varuga. She looks like an Argon, so it's kind of confusing. Anyway, she joins the fight and blows up. So I guess they aren't going to be much help after all. At this point, they're starting to run out of options, and good old VH resorts to recruiting his old friend, Bigfoot. How have you been, big guy? <laughs> Remove that helmet and identify yourself. I don't really know what to say here. I'm actually speechless. I've seen almost 150 Bigfoot movies at this point, and this is a first. He agrees to join the Allies, if only to crush some Argon skulls. So that's some good news at least. Mmm, nice, very nice. But more bad news comes when we learn that the Exterminator escaped, and Aleister Crowley has awakened the Sun God Ra. Bigfoot gets shown around the ship, eventually meeting Dr. Jekyll. Yeah, at this point I'm not surprised. Sure, Dr. Jekyll's on board. He's the resident scientist slash inventor, and he shows the crew his new invention, an implant that allows the user to mind speak, which is basically psychic talking, and allows them to teleport anywhere there's a Wi-Fi connection. That's pretty neat. That's incredible. I thought so, too. But 
Get this, they never use it in the entire movie. Why invent something and show it to the audience if it's never seen? Bigfoot doesn't like this idea. He knows that doctors like to poke and prod and keep you in a zoo until you're dead. He doesn't trust anyone here, so he steals some ship to get some space. Yeah, I guess Bigfoot has his spaceship license. While out flying around, he comes across the exterminator, who's out for blood. They fight back and forth a bit, until Bigfoot randomly shows up on the Argon's ship. What's happening here? Well, it turns out that he has some sort of ultra instinct power that his body will automatically get him out of danger before he even knows about it. In this case, the exterminator was about to shoot him down. So Bigfoot teleported here. Oh, and Bigfoot yes, just yes, naturally indeed. knows mind speed, which is actually something people have reported in real life. But here, I think it's just so they didn't have to animate the mouth. Crawley sends Bigfoot to Anubis to ask for his help again, but it really amounts to nothing. Or, in other words, it was a giant waste of time. Oh, Anubis, god of the dead, maker of mm, stuff. Van Helsing wanders around the ship looking to make a sandwich, and lo and behold, the sun god Ra shows up to grant all of VH's wishes. One is to teleport Rothschild here to the ship. Two is to teleport Bigfoot to the ship. And three is to learn how to win the war, which the secret lies in Area 51. So I guess we're going there now. They fly to the long abandoned base with Rothschild as their prisoner and learn it was all a big trap. Rothschild was behind all of it just to get them to Area 51, where I think he has a teleporter because everyone is now on board the Argon ship. The allies start attacking, not knowing that VH and their princess are on board. They fire at the enemy ship's fuel tanks and the entire thing goes up in flames. But what about the princess? Well, she and the rest managed to escape just in the nick of time. I'm convinced that this isn't a movie any normal sane person could make. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that this is just a big experiment to see if AI alone could make a movie worth watching. And it failed miserably. There is something interesting to note here. The director's name is BC14. That sounds like a computer if I've ever heard it. But wait, it goes further. Bigfoot vs. the Illuminati came out in 2020. Take 14 off of that because of the director's name, BC14, and you get 2006, which is one year before they announced the very first iPhone. But what's the BC stand for? Well, before cell phone, of course. 2006 was the last year before the modern cell phone. Who was the president in 2006? It was George Bush who is a member of the Skull and Crossbones group, which has connections with the Illuminati, who we now know are bad because of this movie. And the only way to take them out is Bigfoot. I've figured it out. Or more likely, it's just a crappy movie made for the sole purpose to be a crappy movie. I'm sure someone out there would find this entertaining, but not me. It's only an hour and 15 minutes long, but it feels like an eternity. I have no idea what was going on through the voice actor's mind when they agreed to be a part of it. However, I will say the animation is quite good and much better than I would have expected. So there's that. Even the music is fine, it's just the idea. Who comes up with this stuff? Aleister Crowley, Van Helsing, Dr. Jekyll? When Bigfoot showed up, I was already numb to the idiocracy that the voices didn't surprise me. There's a lot of dumb sex jokes, a lot of dumb jokes in general. I guess if you were in the right state of mind, you might enjoy Bigfoot vs. the Illuminati. But if you still have your brain cells, skip this one. I generously give it one and a half Aleister Crowley's out of four. I just had a liverwurst sandwich before I came. Is it on my breath? <laughs> gotcha.